All right, so we're ready to start the actual programming for our dynamic functionality. And the first thing we need to do is create a database. All right, so right now uh, I'm at the basically the, the home page of our app, which has nothing in it yet. Remember, all we have uh, for our application is our file structure. All right, in the past few videos, we created the layout, um, all the HTML and CSS files and we'll also be integrating that with our application. Um, so I'm gonna go to localhost slash phpMyAdmin, all right, and basically, let me just log in real quick. Okay, so we're going to create a new database, and I'm just gonna call it Talking Space. Okay, and click on that, and we're going to create um, our first table will be the users table. All right, uh, this is going to have 10 fields. All right, so we're going to have an ID, we'll have a name, an email, uh, an avatar username and password passwords we're going to use md5 encryption uh, you never want to store uh, an actual text password in a database you want to use some kind of encryption md5 is a little weak uh, but it's fine for this for this project um, you might want to use sha1 or, or something even stronger with a hash and or something like that um, but we're just going to use md5 for now going to have a little about field. Um, I think that's it. Um, no, we need last activity and join date. I'm sorry, we need 9, not 10, but that's fine. You can just leave that one blank. Um, now we want to set the types. Okay, the, the ID here is going to be an integer and it's going to be our primary key so we want to change index to primary uh, we want to click AI for auto increment name will be varchar and let's say a hundred email same thing we'll say a hundred as well avatar same thing avatar is just going to be basically the image name uh, we're going to store the image in um, in the images folder and then just point to whatever the name is in the database username let's make the max 10 password is going to be varchar um, we're going to put 64 for this uh, even though I think MD5 is 32 but just to be safe about is going to be a text block with no limit last activity um, is going to be a date time. All right, and then join date will be a timestamp. All right, now we want default values um, for these, and the only one that's going to get a default value is join date. All right, so we're going to set this here to current timestamp. That what that'll do is whenever we enter a user into the database this field will be stamped with the current time all right so so that makes sense when they join when it gets added into the database that's the date they joined all right so that's good uh, let's go ahead and click save all right so that's it for our users table the next table I want to do is um, let's do categories okay so we each topic can have a category and this is only gonna have uh, three I think all right so ID uh, same thing this is gonna be primary key and auto increment um, and then the next one will be the name which will be a varchar and that'll be hundred and we also want a description Okay, description, um, let's make that varchar, and we'll give it a limit of 400. 
and I think that should be good. Let's let's do that. All right. So now we want a topics table, and let's do eight eight columns. ID, which will be primary key, and auto increment. And then we'll have a category ID. And that's basically going to be a foreign key to the categories table. So that'll be an integer. All right. Um, next, actually, I'm going to put 11 for the limit for, for these integers. That's what I usually put. Uh, and then we're going to have a user ID, which will basically be a foreign key for the users table. Um, next, we want. Um, title and that'll be Varkar 100 and body which will be text okay after body let's do last activity and then create date okay and that's going to be uh, that's going to be a current timestamp, so we want to choose that, uh, and that should be good. Actually, last activity will be date time. Um, whoops, I changed the wrong one. That should be timestamp, and this should be date time. All right. So one more. Uh, table here, and that's going to be replies. And let's do five columns ID, okay, and a reply is going to have a topic ID, a user ID, a body, and a create date. Okay, this is going to be 11, 11, body. Um, create date is going to be the timestamp, current timestamp. All right, so that's our entire database. So, what I want to do now um, in this video is I want to create our database class. And we're going to be using PDO, PHP Data Objects. And it's basically um, it's, it's basically the best practice for um, connecting to a MySQL database using PHP. Um, it's it's much safer. Um, it, you can use prepared statements, which obviously adds a lot of security, um, prevents SQL injections, things like that. And the class that uh, I kind of adopted for this project uh, is actually from a blog post. Okay, and it's from um, cult with three t's.com and it's uh, basically a programming blog and it's a it's a PDO PHP class and he kind of goes through um, an explanation of everything I did change a few things uh, but this is basically what I used as um, I guess as a template all right so what I'm gonna do is go to our application and inside of libraries I want to open up database.php all right I'm just gonna um, paste this in all right so it's not too big um, especially compared to, to most database classes but basically we're defining a class called database all right uh, obviously we're using object oriented programming um, we're setting a bunch of variables up here, okay, so we have, um, and they're all private, so they can only be accessed in this class, all right, we have host user, password, and db name, and you can see that these are equal to uh, a constant, which we need to set, and we're going to set that in the, conf in the config file, um, but we'll do that right after we're done with this. Um, so after that, after our credentials, we have a, a dbh, which is basically a handler, so we can um, so we can interact with the database. We have an error variable if we want to output errors, 
and then we have our statement which we can use for prepared statements alright so the first function is a constructor when using PHP you wanna and you wanna create a constructor um, you wanna use this double underscore and then construct alright and whatever is in here is gonna be called whenever you create a new database object just by creating it this will run alright so the first thing it does is selects um, a DSN so we're using MySQL but you can actually use um, quite a few different databases with PDO um, so we want to set that and then we're setting our database name equal to this DB name and that pertains up here to this okay so whenever you want to reference any of these variables you want to use this along with this arrow all right which is a hyphen and a uh, greater than sign all right so you probably know this uh, if you have any experience with um, object-based programming all right so <clears throat> the next thing we're doing is just creating an array of options and we're going to set a couple different options here one is to be um, persistent okay so we just want to have a, a persistent connection so we can create just one object and now we can actually have multiple um, interactions with it and then we're just setting the error mode to uh, exceptions uh, and there's a there's a ton of uh, different options you can use with PDO um, I suggest going to php.net and taking a look at those um, then down here we're just creating a try catch block alright so it's gonna try this code um, if it fails it's basically gonna give us uh, an error message alright and the code is just a connect string really um, we're creating a new PDO object and then we're just passing in our credentials alright so this is coming from up here user pass and then options is our PDO options array. Um, let's see. And next we have our query function, which is going to create the statement for us. So we'll pass in a query from wherever, from wherever we're working from, uh, select all from topics or something like that. And it'll actually, we can create a statement with that. And then we're going to bind values to it. All right. So if we want to say select topic where ID equals one uh, you're going to use this bind method to to say well I want the ID that equals one alright and that'll prevent SQL injections all right. and all we're doing here is checking the, the type of input and just um, putting some um, sanitation or, or validation on it alright so we have integer boolean null and string and it's just gonna bind the value down here and then these here execute is just gonna basically execute whatever your statement is um, result set that's what's gonna be used to grab on to um, the result object alright and we specified here fetch object you can also fetch an array and work with an associative array um, I prefer to work with objects though uh, and then this is basically the same thing except it's going to be just one one uh, result so if we want the topic with the ID of one that's obviously going to be just one returned row so we could use single um, if we're saying select all from topics without any specification we could get a bunch of results so we'll use result set alright row count basically is just going to return the amount of rows returned um, and then last insert ID will just give you the ID of whatever um, the last ID you inserted was and then down here is just some transactions we're not going to really get into that um, transactions I actually didn't really need to put those in but I just figured uh, I would so that's pretty much it for our database class it's it's really simple uh, but it's also reliable and um, relatively secure so the last thing I want to do here is let's make sure we save this and the last thing I want to do is go into the config file and I'm actually going to open my application down here so I don't have to keep going out of the editor alright so I want to go to xamp htdocs 
All right, so I'm going to go to config, config. And I'm just going to paste in a block of code here. All right, so really simple. We're just defining a couple constants. All right, we have our host, our user, and this is this should all be your database credentials. Um, and then our database name. All right, so that's that. And that's where our database class is pulling the info from. All right, and then here I just defined a site title. You can put what you want here. Um, and then here I defined a path for our base URI. All right, so we don't have to say HTTP slash whatever, localhost slash. Uh, it'll just automatically give us that URI. All right, so save that. In the next video, we will be creating our template class and um, get into setting up views and templates and um, other display options.